How's it going, guys? It is that time again, and we are touching on PET, PET exam prep and tasters. So we're going to go through a couple of different things on how to actually, well, teach a taster or teach a normal session and exam preparation, what the actual test is about, what's in it, the length of the actual test, what you should be focusing on in each section, and special requirements of readies and what that actually means. So let's get straight into it, and we'll start off with what a PET exam is. Cool guys, so your PET exam is basically broken up into four different sections, which is essentially broken into three different exams. Now your first one, your paper one, is your reading and writing exam. And as it says, well, you're gonna be focusing on reading and writing, pretty simple. Your paper two is your listening exam, again, it's focused on listening. So something like a listening comprehension, right? They or someone's going to be talking, you're going to be listening to something, and then you're going to end up answering questions on that topic, okay? I don't know if you guys did that a lot at school. I essentially did. Um, I actually did quite a few of those, actually, in every single grade. A lot, a lot of listening comprehensions. I never liked them, but I did a lot of them, right? And then my paper three is your speaking exam. And that's essentially how well you speak in English to someone else, whether it's the examiner, whether it's your partner, or whoever else is in the examination room with you, okay? Now, your grades for that. You get your merit, which is 85% for the total mark or above. You get your pass, which is 70% of the total marks. A narrow fail, which is about 5% below the pass mark. And then a fail, which is, well, anything more than 5% below the pass mark. Okay. Now, when you get the results, where, or when the Brady gets the result, it will either be if it's a pass or a pass with a merit, they'll get their results on the highest papers that they did. Okay. And if they do a fail or they have a fail or they failed or they got a narrow fail, it'll show their lowest marks, right? Or their papers with the weakest marks on it, the lowest marks. And that's basically it from the examination point of view, what it actually is. Those are the topics. That's what it is. And essentially the rest of the vlog, I was going to say the rest of the course, the rest of the vlog is how to actually teach those specific topics, right? So let's climb straight into it. So you're reading and writing. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Otherwise, this course will not, again, again with the course. Otherwise, this vlog is going to be insanely long and you're just not going to have the time to watch the whole thing, which I really want you to watch, right? So let's get back to it. You're reading and writing. It generally has eight different parts in the actual exam, okay? And they are always in the exact same order. So what you can do, here's a little tip in the exam preparation classes, is when you're teaching it, stick to that exact order. Why? Because it's going to come up in the exam in the exact same way. What's the order? Multiple choice, matching, true or false, multiple choice again, multiple choice one more time, and then it goes into your writing se section, which is rewriting sentences, a short message, or short answers, short sentences for answers. And then your last one, it'll either be a letter or a story that you would have to write. Now, each one obviously has X amount of questions in and are valued at X amount of points. However, the total amount of time that you're allowed to spend on the reading and writing section is one hour and 30 minutes. Cool, and that's basically it from that point. Let's move on to our next section. Perfect. So you're listening one. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. It's super easy to read something, have it in front of you, and then answer questions on it as you're looking back at what you read. Now the listening thing, you're only able to listen to a recording or to the recording twice. And once that's done, well, you just better hope you retain all that information. Okay. So again, when you're doing this in the actual exam preparation class, I was going to say course again, I don't know what's with the word in course, or I don't know what's with me in the word course. Anyway, let's get back straight into it. Let's get back into it. There we go. So your listening exam. So there's essentially four different parts. Again, it's in the exact same order. So when you're teaching it, don't bounce around from this section to this section. I like teaching this one. I don't like doing this one. So I'm going to rather do this one first. I'll leave because it's just going to confuse your brain. Stick to the exact same order. And I'm not going to say it again, but it applies to every single section. So my listening, what is it? Multiple choice, two parts to it. A gap filling exercise, the man blank to the shop. What did it say? 
Did the man go to the shop? The man went to the shop? Or what word is missing in that? Okay. And then again, true or false. So what will essentially happen right now is they'll sit still. The examiner will play a recording. They'll listen to it. They can answer the questions or they get the opportunity to listen to it for the second time. I would recommend always stressing the fact that they've got to listen to it twice, okay? Listen to it the second time and they answer the questions, right? And the reason why they can listen to it twice or the reason why they should listen to it twice is because the first time they might miss important details. Where the second time they listen to it, they'll pick up on those blank spaces and then the answers for the exam will be so much easier. And again, the entire amount of time that you're going to get for this section or for this exam is 30 minutes, okay, plus six minutes to copy your answers onto the answer sheet, okay, but listen, don't take that six minutes into account, okay, it's not six minutes extra for doing the course, it's six minutes to actually write down the answers, okay, so you have to have everything or know all the answers by then, okay, so stress, or I can't stress enough, listen to it twice, and then try and get them to sit still and listen. I have one Brady that often listens to it, but as he's listening, he's doing something else. He might be writing down the answers or he's trying to tick the answers so he gets it right. But the more he's doing or focusing on the questions, the less he's focusing on the actual audio and the less chance of him actually getting it right. Okay, I've just managed to get him to start listening without typing now or without writing now. Try and get them to do that from the get go. It makes it so much easier, right? Cool. Let's move on. Cool guys, so your last paper is essentially your speaking paper, right? Now, I did say I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say this again, but I'm going to stress it one more time. It's in the exact same order, so teach the exam preparation lessons in the same order as they would appear in the exam. Okay. Now, I just realized we're teaching it from the book, so it generally is in that order. However, if you're doing past exams, if you're teaching past exam paper, don't jump around to different sections. Stick to that order. Why? Because they're going to get used to that order, and that's the order that's going to pop up in the exam. But I'm going to touch on the one time that you should change in a second. Okay. So back to that speaking. Generally, this is, or this takes between 10 and 12 minutes, and you is pair work. Okay. So basically what happens, there's two students, there's, ooh, there we go, there we go, two examiners, I just completely hit a blanket. There's two students and there's two examiners taking this examination, okay? Now, in this section, there are four sections or four subsections, and they are as follows. The examiner asks both students some questions, okay? And this could be anything from what is your name? What is your surname? Can you spell your surname? What subjects do you like at school? Are you studying? Are you working? General information, right? Again, I'm going to get into, this, into those details a little bit towards the end, but moving on, then the students have a discussion together. So student A asks student B a couple of questions. Student B answers them and then the roles switch over and the other one asks the other one, okay? And then each student takes turn or takes a, ch or has, ooh, blah, 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 blah. each student talks in turn to the examiner, right? So each one has a turn to actually have a conversation with the examiner and they'll get marked on that. And then after that, the students have another discussion together, okay? Now, again, I'll get into all the details in a second, but that is basically your exam papers, right? Your reading and writing, you're speaking and you're listening. And all together, while well, it was 10 and 12 minutes, it was an hour and 30 minutes, and I'm gonna have to recheck that last one because I can't remember offhand, right? And then you add them together, you get the full total of the examination. Perfect, so let's move on to the next section. Cool guys, so my pet exam taster, right? Now, what does it actually entail? Now, the very first page is pretty much what I explained to you earlier when we were on the big screen, now we're on the little screen, but I'm going to go through it again. And what I'll generally ask after I've done the whole intro to the students or to the Brady, hi, my name's Kyle, what's your name? And then we go through the whole normal deal, icebreakers and all, songs if you need to, depending on the age and all that jazz. But my most important question right now would be, do you know what a PET exam is? Some of them will say, yes, I do. I'm writing mine on the 15th of January, 1987. That's the first date that came to my mind. I know it's passed long ago, but it's all good, right? And some of them will kind of look at me and just kind of go, well, hmm, 
is it something you keep at home that's fluffy, has four legs, and you have to feed it? And I'll go, no, that's a different kind of pet. No, I'm kidding. I've never had that answer, but it would be cool to actually have that answer at least once, right? I would answer that way. So if they don't know what it is, I'll go through the same breakdown as what I gave you guys at the beginning of this vlog. Different sections, the times for each one, the structure, that everything is in the exact same order. And once they understand, well, we'll move on to the next section. Now, in my reading and writing, this is pretty much exactly what I told you guys earlier. Three, sorry, I lie, five parts for my reading and then three parts for my writing all together, eight different parts. I've got an hour and 30 minutes to do this in and I'll explain what actually has to happen. I won't go through every detail. No, I lie. I'm not going to go through. I don't mean I'm not going to go through any, every detail. I'm not going to go through the structure. So in other words, I'm not going to say you're first going to do the multiple choice, then you're going to do this section, then you're going to do that section, then you're going to, at this point in time, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We're trying to figure out where they should start in the pet or if they're already for a pet or if they like what we teach or how we teach the pet exam right? Or the examination preparation, right? That's an awesome word to say. So the first part, as you guys know, is multiple choice. Super simple, super easy. They get something, they read it. I would allow them to read it and then I'll double check their understanding before I ask the question. So we'll read it. George Luke text me to say there's just one ticket left for Saturday's concert. Still interested? If so, hurry up and let me know because several other people may want it. Mike, yeah. So I'll get them to read it however they want to read it, not necessarily like that, robot form. I tried to do a robot, but it didn't work out. But anyway, I had fun doing it. So do they understand it? Hmm. So what is George asking? Hmm. Or what does George want, I should say? Or why did they send this message? Hmm. Do they want to buy a chicken? Hmm. And I'll just go through some concept checking questions, right? Or just double check their meaning or their understanding. And then once I know, once I'm happy with the understanding, I'll go, cool. Well, what should George do? A, B, or C? And then I'll let them read it out. I'll read, or they'll read every option out, and then they'll give me the right answer, okay? And then same for the next one, right? There's going to be a couple of multiple choice questions, okay? So, students, Library Brooks borrowed this week. The dates must be returned before the July holidays. So what needs to be returned before the July holidays? Hmm. What dates must it be returned to or returned by? Hmm. What are they talking about in the sign? Where would you find the sign, right? And then go through some, again, just understanding questions, right? Make sure that they understand. It. And then get them to read all three options. And then, well, get them to pick the correct one, okay? So let's go through one last one. Same thing, read, understanding, and read, and pick the right one. So let's jump through to another section. Perfect, guys. So the next section, writing part one, sentence transformation. Basically, what they just asked me here is make the second sentence mean the same thing as the first sentence. Now, this does get a little bit tricky, especially from a new Brady or a Brady that might not be on the same level or on a high enough level to understand everything that the pet exam has to offer, okay? So I do have a few students or a few Bradys that do struggle with this a lot, but the easiest way to do this is give them the example first. I asked my new neighbors where they had lived before. I asked my new neighbors, where did, hmm, how do we make that sentence the same? Hmm. I asked my new neighbors, where did hmm, they live before? I asked my new neighbors, where did I live before? I asked my new neighbors, where did you live before? And then I'll give examples the whole time, and then I'll narrow it down to the one specific one, right? And that's my example. That's the way that I would do it. And then I'll kind of go, well, it's the same. Okay, the same. It means the same. And then we'll go to the next one. They said their old house was quite was quite near London. I almost said quiet. I don't know why. It was quite near London. They said their old house wasn't very hmm wasn't very far from London. Far from London. Wasn't very near. Hmm. 
and then I'll keep giving them options until they get it correct. And then if there is another one, bam, I'll let them do the rest of them. This house is larger than their old house. So their old house wasn't as, hmm, what could we say there? And then I'll highlight it. So their new house is bigger, is bigger than their old house, their old house. So now they're saying their old house, hmm, their old house wasn't as big as their new house. Perfect, trophy time, yeah. And then we'll carry on going through it that way, right? Making it as simple as you possibly can. However, a lot of them will get it immediately. Bah, 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 bah. And then you can actually make up your own sentences and get them to change it to the exact same meaning, right? So we got it. Moving on. My listening one. Again, you guys got it. I mentioned at the beginning, this is the breakdown that I would explain to the Brady at the very first time. Not the very first time. This is the very first time they're doing it, right? So I'll explain it to them, make sure they understand everything, okay? And then we'll go through our multiple choice listening. Now, basically what happens now is they'll get an audio. There'll be an audio in the class. Where do we find it? We click on over there. This isn't an actual taster, so I don't have any audio in there at the moment, but I'm just going to look for audio part one and then play it yeah let them listen to it once let them listen to it again sometimes i ask them do you want to listen to it again yes no sometimes they say yes sometimes they say no and then they answer the question what was the girl or what has the girl bought today now backtracking a little bit what i generally do right now is i actually tell them hmm what does the question say or not tell them i ask them what does the question say hmm what has the girl bought today? Perfect. Remember that question and listen to the audio. And then we'll go through as many of them as we possibly can. Bam, 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 bam. And then I'll get them to obviously select the right one every single time, okay? So my speaking one. These are the types of questions that I said that they might ask. What is your surname? How do you spell it? Do you enjoy studying English? Why or why not? Where do you live or where do you come from? For adult students, for kids or for children in, in schools. I almost said for children in students, which is kind of weird. But for children in school and then so on and so on and so forth, right? Now, these are just a little small piece or small amount of the questions that they can ask. In the actual book, your pet objective book, there's loads of other questions that you can actually think of and come up with. So if you want to, make up your own questions right now and just ask them so you get an extra extended taster, right? And that, bam, is generally the first part of that questionnaire, right? If you look at the beginning, actually, no, I lied, I didn't. Yes, I did. I broke it down. There we go. If you look at the beginning of the vlog again, it'll tell you the exact setup of the questions okay now the next part is that discussion where basically it's just a short discussion of any topic that they give out and then they just have a discussion of that specific topic for example what we could say right now is well hmm this is john bam john likes paintings he likes caps listening to music drinking coffee or tea or juice and he likes animals what can we say or what sentences can we say about this picture? What do you like? Hmm, what don't you like? Do you like this or don't you like this? And then just have a short discussion going, right? Keep it going for at least two, three minutes before moving on. So let's leave it at that from the taster point of view and let's jump into the exam and just end off quickly. Cool guys, so the exam lesson, right? Now, what I said was make sure you go through it in the exact same order as it's presented in their actual examination. Why? Because the students or the gradies get used to that. However, if there's a special requirement, which is one of the ones that I had for one of my gradies, right? And that was specifically go through speaking parts of the exam or past papers speaking parts only. Why? Because he was great at writing, he was great at reading, he was great at listening. He just struggled to actually speak or to put sentences together correctly, okay? So look out for those special requirements and focus on that only. If there aren't any, well, just do it in the exact same order, right? And this is an example of an actual exam. So if we look at the first part, speaking, the speaking section, what's your name? So, hmm, how do we teach that? Well, these words, we have three words, what, your, and name. 
And we need to put that into a proper sentence, okay? So let me do the first one for you, and then you can do the rest. And then type out, what is your name? Bam. And then as they make the question, or as the question comes into play, well, get them to answer it. Why? Because it's the speaking section. They want to speak as much as you possibly can. And then the second one, how spell your surname? So now we have four words. Hmm. How can we do the same thing as question number one? And then let them put it together. And obviously, if they get it wrong, correct them and then allow them to answer that again. How do you spell your surname? Well, let them spell it however they spell their surname, right? And then the same for the third one, fourth one, and fifth one. Now, the one thing that I want to stress a lot right now is at the bottom, ooh, this one doesn't have it. Let's see. Wow. There we go. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Ooh, there we go. So at the bottom of some pages, there's a bunch of exam facts. Now, I used to overlook them because I just kind of went, well, it's not really a question. But then I kind of clicked and went, well, holy moly, that's important. I need to tell them that. That's a fact from the exam, man. We got to do that. So then I started going, well, hmm, what does it say? In this part, the examiner asks you questions about yourself. Hmm. And then I kind of went, well, hold on, wait a minute. That's a really good point. And then I started actually focusing on the exam facts, which is every second page, every page or whatever it is. And then it tells you a little tip or detail about the actual exam. And it tells you what you should be doing. So as you get to this part of this exam, well, I would ask them questions about themselves. Can they answer it? Can't they answer it? If they can't, well, stay here, focus on that and let them answer the questions or figure out how to answer those questions, right? And then they usually ask questions about your name, your daily routine, your likes, your dislikes, where you study your work. And then right then and there, that gives you the questions that you can ask. So there's no way that you can go, well, I don't know what they're going to ask. They're telling you it right over there, okay? So just turn it into questions. And then you only speak to the examiner. You don't speak to the other students. That is important, right? It's to make sure that your brady doesn't get confused between the different sections. Who does he speak to at what time? If he speaks to John and not to the examiner, he might lose marks. If he speaks to the examiner and not to John, he might lose marks again. So just make sure you go through every single one of the exam facts or exam tips at the bottom of the pages, right? And then as you go through the exam, let's just check this, let's just look at this exercise over here. So again, it's just filling in missing words. So we can say complete family words, right? Your something is your aunt or uncle, son or daughter. Hmm. So what could that be? So we've got your aunt, your uncle, and we've got their children, hmm, John and Mary. Now, who are John and Mary? Hmm, there's an S in there. Ah, I know. And then what you can do is either they get it, right, or they don't, and then just fill in the missing letters. Well, it starts with a C. It ends in an N, unless it's cousins, right? But either way, I mean, add in the different letters and let them figure it out for themselves, right? So those are the different tips, tricks, and ideas that I have, right? Just make it as engaging as you possibly can and again i can't stress enough the exam facts at the bottom those are your guidelines your tips the holy grail of the prep or the pet preparation right other than that peace out guys i will catch you on the flip side